On this edition of Northern California Journal, we're going to head north to the historic Governor's Mansion in Sacramento. Be sure to stay tuned because besides learning about the history of the Governor's Mansion, we'll bring you a special presentation of classic Christmas music as world-famous guest artist Kenneth B. Grant plays the Grand Steinway piano at the mansion. Let's start off by learning more about the mansion itself. Louise Maher explained that the mansion was not always intended for the governor or heads of state. When the house was built in 1877, it was not built as a governor's mansion. It was built as a private home for a man named Albert Gallatin. He came to California to uh, find his fortune in gold. Instead, he gained his fortune selling hardware. The house was a private residence up until 1903 when the state bought it from Joseph Steffens, the father of Lincoln Steffens, uh, who did a lot of lecturing and uh, uh, journalism and uh, they sold the house to the state in 1903 when Governor Pardee actually was going to commute from Oakland to Sacramento to conduct business. Oh my. And his colleagues suggested that he uh, rent and or, as they persuaded him to do, move into this home. And it was totally vacant when Mrs. Pardee, Helen Pardee, had to move in. So she brought her own um, furnishings with her uh, to uh, make life comfortable. From there, we moved to more current times, and the people are very interested in uh, what Christmases were like here at the mansion. And uh, one of the, the favorite families was the family of Governor Earl Warren. They lived here for 10 years and celebrated 10 Christmases in the house from 1942 to 1953. He would have celebrated more, but he was uh, recruited, so to speak, to go to the uh, Supreme Court. Uh, President Eisenhower asked him to be a Supreme Court justice. Well, what a lot of memories that oh, are yes. really here at Christmas time. Yes. I'm sure that people must ask you, was Christmas the same then as it is today? Uh, did they do things different? They had a Christmas tree. Um, you didn't have the decorations as we do today. We over-decorate in today's homes and, and environment. Uh, and at the time, it was very, uh, I guess, Spartan, you might say. Uh, Mrs. Warren and the, uh, the family had a 12-foot Christmas tree in the uh, bay windows in the uh, facing H Street here from the mansion. And uh, it had lights on the tree, ornaments on the tree. But there were no outdoor lights. And of course, in the beginning, that was wartime, so you wouldn't have had outdoor lights anyway. Come on in and, and join me as I show you some of the favorite spots that I like to talk about here at the Governor's Mansion. This is the formal parlor. There are two parlors in an, a, a, a Victorian home, the formal and the informal. The formal parlor here is decorated to reflect the Victorian era. The furnishings are not from the Victorian period, but are reproductions that Mrs. Warren purchased in the 40s. She wanted to have this room look like a Victorian parlor. So she went out and shopped for the furniture and was able to get it. It's been here through Mrs. Warren's period of, of living in the home, which is 10 years, the Knights and the Browns and the short period that the, the Reagans lived here. No one changed the look of this room. So this room has been like this since 1944. The bay window that faces H Street is where the Warrens would put their Christmas tree and they had a 12 foot Christmas tree brought in right after Thanksgiving and the whole family except the governor would trim it and they would have multicolored lights on the tree and ornaments and ornaments made by the children and uh, they would put them on the tree and then about oh, 10 days before Christmas wrapped gifts would appear underneath the tree as everyone gathered their presents, wrapped them up and put them there. And all those presents were opened in this room on Christmas Eve after the Warrens had their Christmas Eve dinner and they listened to the carolers out front and then they would open their presents Christmas Eve only to be have the surprise presents from Santa Claus the next morning in the children's rooms and that was a special treat for them. I promised you in the beginning of the program that we were going to have some Christmas music, and that's coming right up. But first, Louise told me about the room where the Steinway Grand Piano sits today. The music room actually, originally, was a library when the house was built. And there were bookshelves in the corners. 
But when the first First Lady moved into the house, that would have been Helen Pardee, the wife of Governor George Pardee. She looked at this room and thought it would better serve the family by being a music room. She had four daughters and she wanted them to know how to play the piano. Uh, she purchased the piano, which is in the music room today, and uh, it has been played by various visitors uh, to the mansion, including Liberace. We understand even Phyllis Diller sat down at the keyboards and played here.
watching Northern California Journal, and we're visiting the historic Governor's Mansion in Sacramento. Now don't go away, because when we come back, we'll have more special Christmas music played on the mansion's Steinway Grand Piano featuring guest artist Kenneth Grant. So stay tuned. to help prepare your community, you never know how many lives you might change. When we come together, we become part of something bigger than us all. My mom's my hero. My mom's my hero because she saved a baby bird that fell out of the net. My mom's my hero because she feeds me. She taught me how to swim. She cooks it on the grill sometimes. Usually my dad does that, but never mind. My mom's my hero because when my coach, Mr. Riley, got sick, she helped out and coached the whole team. My mom's my hero because she helps me with long division. My mom's my hero because she took the pledge to smoke outside. Now no one can smoke anywhere in our house. Dad can't even smoke in the car. Children appreciate all you do for them. Until you can quit, pledge to make your home smoke-free, smoke outside, and protect kids from asthma attacks, ear infections, and other respiratory illnesses. And I know Mom's doing it for me and my little brother. My mom's my hero because she loves me. Take the pledge. Call toll-free 1-866-SMOKE-FREE. Go out for your kids. You're their hero. to this Christmas season special edition of Northern California Journal. Stay tuned as we listen to more Christmas music played on the mansion's Steinway Grand Piano by guest artist Kenneth Grant. First, though, we go back to our tour of some of those more special rooms of the mansion. Louise Maher told us about the informal dining room. This is the informal parlor, and it's decorated right now to represent uh, the way the Brown family lived. Um, Mrs. Brown was instrumental in having the furniture reupholstered. You'll notice in the room is a black and white television set, and that reminds me to remind the visitors the importance of television in the lives of some of the people who lived here. Virginia Knight came to the mansion as a bride, but how did she meet Goodwin Knight? She met him one time in a volunteer work, but one night at home, she was living with her mother at the time, the telephone rings, and it's the governor calling. Uh, Virginia takes the telephone call and then a little perplexed turns to her mother and she said, you know, mother, the governor is calling and asking me to go out to dinner, but my favorite television show is on. What do you suppose I ought to do? Well, obviously, Virginia's mother told her to go out and have dinner with the governor and uh, uh, Virginia missed her favorite show that night, which happened to be I Love Lucy. And I'm sure that today she is still watching reruns of I Love Lucy somewhere. But uh, it paid off. Governor uh, and Mrs. Uh, Knight were married, and Mrs. Knight came to the home as a bride, carried across the front entrance as a bride, twice for the cameras and once for their own personal memories. Uh, many of the First Ladies entertained in the informal parlor. They would have their teas and their luncheons here. In fact, Mrs. Brown had luncheons and dinners 
to the point where they overflowed into the hallway. There would be tables set out here in the hall and in the music room as well as in the both parlors and the dining room. This is the, the formal dining room and actually the only formal place where the uh, first families could sit down to eat until a, uh, an office was converted into a breakfast nook in the 1920s. In 1940s, when the, uh, the Warrens moved into the house, and Mrs. Warren being the excellent cook that she was, uh, she would prepare Christmas dinner, and it would be served in this room, and the family would be here, and, except for James, the oldest son, at least in 1944, he was away serving in the, uh, the war. But the family would have dinner in here, all prepared by Mrs. Warren. She would roast the turkey, have sage dressing and mashed potatoes and gravy, uh, baked sweet potatoes, cranberry sauce, uh, homemade rolls, and butter balls that the children made. The, the children didn't help with dinner except to make those butter balls. They did help afterwards. They were allowed to clear the table, and take the dishes to the adjoining kitchen, rinse the dishes and stack them so that the staff could wash them the following day. Uh, dessert would have been one of one or many of Mrs. Warren's famous cakes, her angel food cake or her chocolate cakes. You know, just looking around at the mansion gets me wondering if any of the first families had talented musicians like R. Ken Grant to grace the home at the holidays. Perhaps we can imagine what it must have been like to live in the mansion and then on a Christmas day to sit in those elegant chairs in the music room and hear beautiful songs like this played on the Steinway Grand Piano. Mrs. Knight redecorated the kitchen and she had the floor as you see it right here in the butler's pantry. And uh, within the past year, the Dosen Association provided the funds to have the kitchen floor redone so it appears to be as Mrs. Knight had it back when she was first lady here in the mansion. So I think they did a very good job in, in uh, replicating it. And uh, this table, is the same table in the photo. It is one of Mrs. Warren's tables where she would work. She had two of them, one here and one against the window. Mrs. Knight came in and she needed more counter space. Uh, there had been a large refrigerator in this area and then Mrs. Knight pulled that out, said I need more counter space, was able to uh, duplicate the tile we believe it came from Gladding McBean up in Lincoln, so they were able to uh, find the same tile that Mrs. Uh, Warren had, put it in, and add it more cupboards. She changed the, the, the look of the cupboards with the doorknobs. Problem was, after they took the refrigerator out, they looked around and said, where do we put the refrigerator? So they did find a spot, and they put it against the wall next to a stove, and in order to allow for the doors to open, they had to build a box on the outside wall to hold the refrigerator so it's flush inside. Thank you. 
that wraps up our visit to the historic Governor's Mansion in Sacramento. Thanks to Louise Maher for taking us through her favorite parts of the mansion, and to guest artist Kenneth Grant for playing the mansion Steinway Grand. From all of us at KFTL, we wish you a very Merry Christmas. And for Northern California Journal, I'm Raleigh Adams. <laughs>